It's 4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means. It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. This week, starring really, really, really special guest star, Miss Robin Frederick. Yeah, baby. Woo! Fresh, kind of, from the river. Really. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the big show. Always good to be here. Always, <laughs> Always good to be here and see everybody's name go by in the, the credit roll there on the side. <laughs> it's it's so great after the road rally because you know a lot of these people and mm-hmm. they come up. I and do. I don't know how many of you guys were in the room for Robin's presentation this year, but you know, uh, every year I don't need to be in there when she does it. I've known Robin forever, and I you know published the books, and I know so much of what she's going to do. But I think I started hanging out in the room as a courtesy, just a, as a friend and you know coworker back then and. Every single time I hang out in the room, I walk out of there going, boy, am I glad I stayed for that. I learned a lot and heard so many compliments about oh, your presentation. It's just informative, polished, and you go places that people, even that have been in there three or four years in a row, don't expect you to go. Oh, I always try to do something new, yeah, yeah. and I, because it keeps me interested, too. So this year, I was working on Universal Lyrics this right. year, and I found two or three things I hadn't thought of before, you know, that just had not occurred to me. And I and I got I, I have the pure joy of presenting these really nerdy songwriting things yeah. to a whole bunch of other nerdy songwriters who get really excited about That's it. That's my people. They're where, nerds. <laughs> where else would I find that? It's a true um, it's a true pleasure to be able to do the road rally because of the people who come to the road rally because of taxi taxi members and their, and their guests. They're passionate about what mm-hmm. they do. They're not yeah. just interested. They're not just dipping their toe in the water. They're actually passionate. Yes, and, and I am too. And it never stops. I mean, you, your whole life, you're, you're you get to have that passion. It's wonderful, and you keep learning. Yeah. You know, and no matter how many years you've been writing, and I've been writing a lot of years, um, you just you keep learning stuff. And that's what keeps it fresh. That's what keeps the passion alive, too. So I want to tell them a quick anecdote you just reminded me of. Uh, probably 10 years ago or more, I went to a marketing seminar in Austin, Texas. Some guy has kind of a cultish compound, and he charges people like $20,000 a weekend. Uh, I get a free ticket. I would never spend mm-hmm. that much money Good. on anything. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> uh, anyway, so Michael Karoff and I went down together, and we're sitting in this guy's seminar. And day number two, the guy's got a book that he wrote that he charged some absurd amount of money for. And day number two, he said, uh, blah, 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 Robin Frederick. And I went, what? And he said, Robin Frederick, one of the greatest writers. He wasn't even speaking in terms of songwriting. Um, and he's got one of your poems or something in his book. Huh. Yeah. I've, I've never <laughs> no, shown you this. No. I mean, this guy was like a big deal in the ad agency world, and he's a consultant to big writers at ad agencies, and he held you up as, now, this huh. woman is a writer. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll have to show you the book. I remember who that was. Uh, I've got the book <laughs> in my... Right yeah. He's charging 20000 a weekend. Yeah, some ridiculous <laughs> amount of money. And uh, you do get... You can get my books for a lot less money than that. That's See, right. And <laughs> Speaking of which... <laughs> how is that for a segue, gang? <laughs> we are doing something this week that we've never done before, which is whoever gets voted as having the best song of this show can pick either the Blue Book... <laughs> Shortcut stand songwriting. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I can't do that without covering the author's face. Oh, that's okay. Or The Green Book, which is Shortcuts to Songwriting for Film and TV. Um, both incredibly good books. It all depends on which one you may have read uh, or not read yet and mm-hmm. which uh, area you're most interested in. So what we're going to do... To, oh, I want to say something before we go any further, which is we're fine. None of us have been um, affected by the fires, and we greatly appreciate all the emails and phone calls from you guys. It's amazing. Um, obviously, a lot of people have been affected by the fires, and houses have been lost, and a, a life or two. Uh, thankfully, not a, a lot of loss of life. But just so you know, what they show you on TV, usually, even though they're big areas, um, we're 25, 30 miles away, from, at least, from the closest area. And unless the wind did a 180 and came back at us for a number of days, we're fine. Um, one of our staff members actually lived very close to the fire, and she's had to deal with you know, a, a strong potential threat um, and lots of smoke. But thank you for all the, the kind wishes and stuff. I've been getting them on a regular basis now for like a week. Here in so. California, we always know which way the wind blows. <laughs> That's right. Always. <laughs> and, and frankly, the fires are generally, um, the winds are coming off the desert mm-hmm. and blowing to the north, which is unusual for us. In uh, this case, yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, it's usually so, southwest. 
toward, toward the southwest. Right. So the northwest. we're good. Other than, you know, it looks like it's snowing sometimes, um, but all good. So anyway, the objective of today's show is to do short little bursts on each of these songs. We've got 15 songs that we're going to play. And the people, we asked the folks who submitted their music to hit us with one question. So Robin will look at one as aspect. We're not going to spend five or ten minutes a song. We're going to spend a couple minutes a song and try and get through all 15. Then at the end of the show, I'm going to stop at 5.20 p.m. And we're going to go back and we'll listen to just like the first 10 or 15 seconds of each song to refresh your memory. And then the folks in the chat room will vote and whoever has the best song will get their choice of one book or the other book. So that's the game plan. Don't forget, if you're watching the archives, subscribe to our channel. Like us. And you know what? Share. Share the video with somebody because that's what YouTube really likes the most is shares. So with all that in mind, here we go. The first song we're going to listen to is called I Can't Change Your Mind. This is by Chris Watts. And Chris's question is, is there anything you would change to help improve our song? And if so, what would it be? And if I may comment before we hear a note of music, if it's our song, there should be two people listed as the author. writers, yeah. I think this is the <laughs> artist, Chris, Chris Watts, and, and the co is probably the, one of the two co-writers. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it would be nice always to have the other co-writers. Always so, nice to do. There you go. Let's have a listen. Uh, Bria, would you hit that button? gorgeous song. I love the vocal. I love, there's so many things I love about it. I, and the simplicity of the guitar and, and the vocal is really, really nice. Um, this is, here's the thing, the lyric here, it, the, you've got three sections, a verse, silence falls like rain between us, that first section. Then you have what looks like it's supposed to be a pre-chorus. Do I reach for love only when she's leaving? And that's the same lyric each time. Then it sounds like you have a chorus after that. She said, this love is black and blue, said there's no us in you and I beautiful relationship song. 
here's what's happening in the in the lyric. I would imagine that a lot of pe people besides me, other listeners, would have a difficulty getting engaged with this lyric because the singer is telling us about the relationship but isn't letting us on the inside of the singer's emotions. So the first, the first verse does exactly what it should do, which is it introduces us to the relationship. Silence falls like rain between us. I look up and see her eyes cast down. She's in my head and I can't breathe suffocating in her doubt. We get a very clear picture of relationships, which is wonderful. Then we go to another section that doesn't really build intensity in the emotion. It just continues to explain. Do I reach for love only when she's leaving, turning it over in my mind? Now we get inside the singer's mind a little more than in the relationship. So we changed the point of view slightly. We moved inside the singer. And now we get to the chorus. She said, now we're inside what she's saying. Mm -hmm. She said, this love is black and blue, said there's no us in you and I. Every section here is beautifully crafted, but none of the sections is taking us to the heart of what the singer is feeling. What, when you say, I can't change her mind, what does that feel like? I've tried, I've pushed, I've held her, I've kissed her, I've loved her, but I can't change her mind. Everything about this relationship comes down to the singer's desire and need to change her mind. So work backwards, this is what I would suggest, work backwards from your, from your refrain or hook line, I can't change her mind, and give us in the chorus the, the emotional heart of what the singer is feeling, and in the rest of the song, give us the intensity with which he has tried to, to change her mind. That's the measuring stick I was talking about mm -hmm. at the road rally. Use a measuring stick, compare it to something. How hard has he pushed her? How much has he held her? Those kinds of things will engage the listener right away in what your song is, is about because then we get to be flies on the wall. We get to be voyeurs. We get to be involved in the emotion the singer is feeling. And that's the only thing that's missing here. There's so much beauty in this melody and in the vocal and in, it's it's really gorgeous. The, the guitar part melody Ooh. is awesome. Yeah. My favorite thing in the song is Love is Black and Blue. There's mm -hmm. a song title. It is. Yeah, there's but, several songs here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've got to wonder if there's, it's so good and makes so much sense as a title. There, I will have to look it up after the show. I wonder if anybody's ever titled a song that. And there's no us in you and I. Yeah, beautiful. Um, Great yeah, stuff. there's three titles there, and, and so you need to pick one and take us into the emotion in that one. It seems like there's too much information here for the listener and not enough emotion. And here's what's amazing about the lovely Miss Robin Frederick, which is she got held up on the freeway because there was a motorcycle accident, walked in about four minutes before the show, has not heard these songs, and is able to spit out that much great information on a cold listen like that so yay you're, awesome cold job cold listens are the way to do it actually because you're listening like a listener <laughs> I'm going to hold you that every yeah. time you're on the show oh no I'm going to have to be uh, <laughs> Sometimes you have to really think about it. <laughs> that, but yeah, you don't. Your, you, it's I, your first listen, you know, that tells you what the emotion is. Yeah. And when I felt I wasn't responding, I started to, and then I stopped. You just and reach I, so right the in there. The, why. If you have, like, Superman X-ray vision for this stuff. You're <laughs> Thank amazing. You. Anyway, all right, okay. on to number two. Let's yes, have a please. listen. This is called Then Reality, and this is by Carrie Moore. question.
forget by pretending instead. To reality rips the heart from me. Good. That's great. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Um, that's an absolutely gorgeous lyric, uh, perfectly um, crafted, with a, you know an emotional payoff in each one. Then reality sinks in and sinks me. Then reality makes a fool of me. Can I interject something that I should have said at the top of the song, which is the I question? Will, I'm going to do this uh, right okay. now. Okay, yeah, so jump in there. Let me do that. All right. Yeah. So I want to say, this is an absolutely gorgeous lyric. Um, yes, the question for this, which I and I, my, I think I mentioned it, it's an interesting question. Is this song just too much of a downer to be used in TV or film? Okay, and that's exactly what I want to address. It's not too much of a downer to be used in TV or film. I mean, all you have to do is watch a show like This Is Us, and I mean, there's a, a, a scene in which the father is dying, and this song goes on forever underneath it. I mean, and it's a, a very slow, very, and it builds quietly into this climax as he realizes that he can go on. It's just, uh, it, yes, there are definitely scenes. It, all you have to do is look at, a, at film or TV and look at the kinds of scenes that use songs. And you'll see that very emotional, very dark scenes do use songs. Absolutely, they need them. Um, and you'll see a, you know, some a group like Daughter being used. A song called Medicine was used famously in Blacklist. I mean, long, like five minutes long. It runs under three, four scenes. And it's very dark. Um, so, yes, it can't be, it probably wouldn't be used in a commercial, but commercials are a whole different animal yeah. from film and TV shows, and you didn't ask about commercials. So that would be the only use in to picture that I would say you couldn't use a song that's very, very dark, much darker than this one, in fact. This isn't all that dark. Well, that's I mean, the issue. And I had a question. Is this about somebody who passed away, or is it about a lover or I husband or spouse that left? It doesn't matter, because you could use it under either kind of scene, and mm -hmm. the scene will tell you. So I found that, I, I also asked that question as I was listening, and I realized that it didn't matter. Yeah. It's uh, uh, because it'll depend on the scene to tell you which it is. And that's just fine. It's, it's a beautiful lyric that's very, very universal. It's about leaving. And of course, there's tons and tons of, of, of scenes about leaving. The only issue here that I hear is that, when you, is that it's a very warm track. The, the, the acoustic rhythm guitar is beautiful. It's the instrumentation, the voice. And you can definitely do this. It's the kind of thing that Nick Drake did so well, when very warm and inviting, yet the pain is like really serious. Um, but when you go to a major chord on then reality, and then reality is the pivot point in this, in every of the, one of these verses. When you go to then reality and you go to a major chord coming out of a kind of minor-ish feel, you've, in a sense, undercut your song. You've lifted it back up. Mm -hmm. Major chord will always tend to make you feel sweeter, happier, less complicated. And this is a very complex very sad song. So yes, you can use, of course, major chords when you're writing sad songs, of course you can. But I wouldn't use it, I wouldn't suddenly switch to a major chord on the very line in which reality hits the singer. I would. That's right where I wouldn't probably say, suggest that you go to a major chord, which uplifts the listener and makes you feel m more at peace and a little bit happier and a little more relaxed. So that point, it almost sounds to me like, from your question, and from that point in the song, it's almost as if you were afraid of going too dark with the song. And I don't want you to ever be afraid of going for the genuine emotion that you feel when you write the song. You want the song to express honestly what the emotion is that you feel, no matter how dark that may be. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't be comforting at the same time as, you, as you're dealing with darkness, with pain. And again, Nick Drake is a great example of that. But you, unless you're very careful with something like that, when you sing then, then reality, which is the high point of the melody and the high point of the lyric, and you put a major chord under it, you're telling the listener, ah, but then reality tells me it's okay, but the lyric doesn't go there. The reality sinks in and sinks me, which is a beautiful line. 
So the only thing I would suggest here is that be true to the feelings that you felt when you wrote the song. Don't worry about what others may think about it. Write what's in your heart and in your melody, your chords, and your lyrics. And if what you want to do is comfort, then comfort sometimes like you feel, it feels like you're still in this house. That's a comforting line. Must be the love the walls won't let out. I keep thinking you'll answer my shouts. Beautiful lyric writing. And that could all be, in fact, a little more, if you wanted to go a slightly more comforting and major with it, you could. But then reality is where it would probably switch towards more of a minor. I'm not suggesting that you change anything here. I would go ahead and submit it to film and television uh, libraries and see what they say about it, see if, if you'll get them to accept it. Um, going forward, just keep that in mind as you write. And by the way, your voice can cause people to fall in love with you yes. without even knowing you. It's just <laughs> There's a texture in your voice that just... It's gorgeous. Yeah, astonishingly Absolutely perfect gorgeous. for this. Song. Love to, to have you uh, hear what else you're doing. And um, much success to you. Okay. All right, moving on. The next one is called Anymore. It's by Carl Wurzbach. Do you want to read the question? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Uh, I'm not sure what genre to call it, whether the voice is too quirky or quirky enough, and if it needs more instrumentation or not. Okay. So you cheated. Those are like three or four questions That's okay. in there. No, but we'll let you get away with it. He wants to know what genre it is, and, and yeah. is he nailing the genre in, in all ways? So we, let's do it. Okay. Gotta take my time Struggle for words Something's wrong This is absurd Just can't do What I used to do Anymore It's so hard Let's uh, stop there because we got we got the answers to your questions. <laughs> All right. Yay! Lay it on us. Yeah. Uh, well, you know the obvious reference is Randy Newman on this, and uh, you just took Randy Newman went a little bit further, somewhere between uh, you know Tom Waits and Randy Newman and um, a whole bunch of interesting people. As long as that as that vocal stays remains believable. Mm -hmm. authentic and believable you don't have to worry because there's always a place for somebody in in this space you could find film and TV uses for this um, in in the kind of you know I'm I'm wiped out after a weekend of partying and it's Monday morning and you just can't get up and I could think of about five times in any episode of shameless you could use there that. you go shameless <laughs> it's great yes Yes. So <laughs> every cast member, by the way, take a look at that show and play the song underneath the scene, okay. and you're going to have your answer. Um, yes, this is as far as genre. I all I can do is give you a reference artist, which is Randy Newman. It's blues. It's um, uh, indie. I don't know what you'd call it. Indie blues. Let's call it that. It it has its own genre. It, it creates its own its own field of, of authenticity. And so when you want to submit it, I would probably submit it into film and television under uh, under a blues label. Um, and then you're asking, I, I answered the question about the vocal. No, I don't think it's too quirky. And I, I it feels believable. It feels authentic to me. It was right, it was teetering a couple of times, but it kept falling over onto the side of authentic. And I think it would work great with a scene. Um, 
and uh, instrumentation. I would build it just a little. I'm sorry we stopped right there, but I wanted to just go address these questions. Probably I would suggest you might want to uh, add a bass, uh, stand-up bass, and maybe a brushes drum kit. Um, when you get to the, I remember flying for days without a plane, that, and just add a little brushes there. Um, take a look at some of Randy Newman's stuff and see if there isn't something in the blues line of, that you could get some ideas for production from. I wouldn't do much. You really don't need it. That voice takes is interesting enough and it keeps the attention. I would. I don't think you have to do much at all. So, uh, but just build a little bit when you get to that section. Uh, I remember flying for days and and kick the energy up just a little bit. Uh, that's that's it. That's all I got to say. I, I'm not going to add much other than I remember my dad saying to me when I was a kid, once you get past 50, that what used to be a minor ache or pain can be terminal. <laughs> <laughs> he said, a pimple can be a tumor. Yeah. And he went on this whole litany of things. It's true. Your body goes to hell in a handbasket after a certain age. So I love the fact that... It's a great lyric. <laughs> and, it's a, and it's unique in that way. There would be scenes that it would be difficult to find a song to go with that scene. And they're going to be looking for that voice that sounds like a Randy Newman or a Tom Waits or something yeah, like that. Yeah, rusty and crusty. Yep, yep. <laughs> so this is a good film and television song, and I think it's right on target. So build a little bit and keep the lyric exactly what it was, <laughs> exactly what it is. Great job, Carl. It's All right. Uh, moving on, the next one is, for, and I don't know if you pronounce your name Angela Sheik or Angela oh. Sheik, but it's spelled S-H-E-I-K, -E and this is I Just Want Love for Christmas, which is very apropos considering we're just a couple weeks out from the holidays. So, but, oh, and the question is, really just looking for a general critique, so what would make this song better? Okay. One, two, three. Presents underneath the tree Feeling like I don't need a thing this Christmas Because you're here with me Two, three, four Hang a wreath on the old front door Let's call our favorite friends and have them over Their smiles keep me warm Baby, it's Christmas, I Angela's music, by the way. I know her, and I really like her. Is stuff. there anybody you don't know? <laughs> well, they're all just taxi members. I know them all. Yeah, she does some really interesting electro stuff, really interesting echoplex stuff. Um, okay, so what I hear, the the verses uh, put me in, in a mind of Feist, mm -hmm. um, which I really like. They're sweet, upbeat, easy to listen to, catchy, fun, loved all that. Got to the chorus, and the melody started to drag a little bit. It was a little more familiar and generic than I think this song deserves. After a kind of feist-like simplicity of the verses, I wanted to hear something a little more contemporary in the chorus melody. Not necessarily more complicated, but I would love to hear, rather than, maybe it's Christmas, I've got all I need, maybe extend that line a little till it runs into the next line. Or play with the rhythm of, baby, it's Christmas, mm -mm, I've got all I need, baby, it's... Christmas, uh, you know, go play with that a little bit to to give your chorus more in more rhythmic interest in the melody and a more modern sound, contemporary sound in that melody by playing with the phrasing, playing with the rhythm of the melody, and maybe extending or shortening some of those phrases so that we get more interesting things going on. Maybe divide the third line into two shorter phrases. I've got every little thing I've been hoping for. Da 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 da. And then the other one other thing I would suggest here is the payoff line, just love this Christmas for me, really is not the punchy payoff line this song could use. It's tough. I always recommend that people write backwards from their from their payoff line because it's so hard to come up with one after you come up with a really good rest of the song. 
it's it's having a weak payoff line for the chorus, which is the last line of the chorus. What makes it a weak line? Um, just love this Christmas for me. We the song and, for me sounds well, like an afterthought for one thing. Just love this Christmas for me. I it's funny I noticed that and I it didn't make sense to me when I first heard it. It's like just. Love. It came oh, from, all you're asking for is love. I get it now, but so I had to think interpret of, it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. There's a better That's, way and a more punchy way to say this. I don't need a single thing more. Watch out, because here you're right. You're writing to the rhyme on your on your chorus. That's the other thing that's happening. Need see for more me. Um, I would rework the chorus because I think you have a monster little song here for uh, Christmas. And as you do know, there's lots of listings that come up. You know, starting in yeah, July. A ton of them. This yeah, year, yeah. For, you did. Yeah. Um, so I would definitely work on that chorus and just keep the track you have. You don't have to change anything. It's really cute. You could add some electro bits into the chorus to give it a little more of a, a contemporary sound, um, but nothing much, nothing major. Uh, but th that's what I would work on is get that melody a little more contemporary and watch your payoff line and watch out for writing to the rhyme. This needs to be freshened up a little bit and I think you'll have a killer song. Oh, I love that. Right. How many years? I've known you for at least 10 years. I've never heard you say writing to the rhyme. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, every time I learn something. Um, I never said that to you. Okay. No, you haven't, honestly. Um, okay, the next one. Good well, job on that, Angela. Um, Next one is I Ran Out of Time, and this one is from Patrick Adams. Out of time. And the question is, I would like to know what I need to do musically to bring this song up to contemporary country standards. Ah, Thanks for all your help. Good okay. question. Yeah. Love that question. There's a lot of potential here, so we're going to talk about the music melody side of this thing. We're going to talk about melody, because um, there's definitely things you can do structurally and with the melody itself. For the very first thing, which is really simple, is you can cut down your instrumental sections. Cut your intro down to one, the first four chords and start right into the song. People want to hear the singer now. We're very singer-centric. We want to get to who the singer is and what the singer's feeling. So get right to three in the morning, four chords, and you're in. 
Okay, after the end of the chorus, that's why I was listening and wanted to hear the mm -hmm. beginning of verse two, you have a long instrumental break again. Again, that's where listeners drop out. Yeah. And that's why we don't do it in contemporary country or pop or rock or any place else. We cut those out now, those four and eight bars. We used to do them, but we don't do them anymore. So just drop that long break. What, what, what do I do? You gave me, what do I do? Three, four, one. You gave yep. me plenty of warning. Okay, go right into your next verse. Um, this is what we do now. Okay, so now that melodically, um, you have a nice, it's got a good flow to it, but there's what contemporary pop and country and every other genre. One of the things we're doing with melody now is that we are eliminating pauses at the ends of lines. So you have some long pauses, especially in the chorus. So when you get to, you ran out on me only to make me see you in my whole life. The story's bad, I'm feeling sad, I've been missing you, pause. As if it's the end of the chorus. And we don't do that anymore. Instead, what we would do is probably lengthen that line so I'm feeling bad because I still can't get over missing you. I'm feeling bad, uh, uh, but you showed me the truth. You know, so you add a few words, add a few notes, and just run it right into the beginning of the next line. In, in some of these choruses now, I don't even know where the singer breathes anymore. <laughs> when they're in the studio, that's okay, they can punch lines in, but I don't know how they do this stuff live because you can't breathe. If you listen to a Luke Bryan song, you listen to Lady Antebellum, any of these artists, it's, it, these lines run into each other, run into each other, and when they get these long choruses, which you have here, so that's good. A lot of times we have these very long, intricate, complex choruses, and, but what they do is they tend to build. They'll, if, if they're divided in two parts, like yours is, where you have uh, mirror images, you just sing it and then you sing the same melody again. What they'll do is, is make sure that every line it falls forward. There's tons of forward momentum in these melodies. So instead of you ran out on me, only to make me see, which is where the melody is following the rhythm of the underlying beat. You might want to experiment with trying to start your melody line on the upbeat. One, you ran out on me. You, one, you, one, you ran out on me. Only to make me see you were my whole life. And that adds this touch of uh, hitting important words on the upbeat, which makes listeners notice them makes listeners feel like their shoulders are going up and they're falling forward. That's a trick that you hear in a lot of, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the song and I can't right now. Um, you'll hear it in various country songs where the verses will emphasize, all the phrases will start on the down beats, on the strong beats down, and the chorus will switch. And all of the, uh, the phrases will start on, the, on an upbeat after or in between the downbeats. It's a, it's a wonderful exercise to play with. So what I'm gonna to suggest to you, because there are a number of things you could do with this melody, I'm gonna suggest that you listen to, go to the charts and, and on billboard.com, the country charts, or bdsradio.com, and go through the country charts and listen to the top 20 songs. Pick one song that you like the melody of, and you'd like to write a melody like that, learn to play and sing that melody Count along, learn, notice where the phrases start. Get a really deep understanding of that melody. Then write your own lyric to that melody just as an exercise to see how, your, how it sounds and how it feels literally in your body to sing a contemporary country melody because it's very different from the feel of what you're doing here. This is a little more habitual. This is in your comfort zone. You want to get out of your comfort zone by playing and singing contemporary songs in any genre you want to work with. If any of you have a, a, a problem with writing contemporary melodies, study the, pick the top 20 songs, find one you like, and then learn to sing it, play it, sing along with it, play along with it, write your own lyric to it, get to know that melody until you have it in your body. Then go write a melody and you'll start right away. You're gonna start wanting to do different things with your melody than you were doing before, I promise you. Okay, well, I, woke, I woke up at 4.43 this morning, could not fall back to sleep. Went to bed early last night. Went to bed at like 10 o'clock. Never go to bed before midnight. Anyway, woke up at 4.43, couldn't fall back asleep, turned on my TV, and the Faith Hill Tim McGraw special was on um, the Soul to Soul tour. And the quality of the songs that those two sing are, you know, they, they're, they're super picky. They get and the best. Yeah, yeah and, and they're they working get, with they the pool of the best writers yeah. in the business. There's a song called How to Speak to a Woman, How to Speak to a Girl. It's a duet with the two of them that's got one of the best examples of 
just top-notch phrasing. Just, oh, really? Yeah, okay. so watch that Yeah, special. melody in country now has become just as important and just as good as the lyrics. And that didn't used to always be the case, but it is now. And, and the listings that we're getting from Nashville, they're always asking for fresh melodies. They don't want the yeah. same old stuff. Yeah, go find the artists, contemporary artists that you like, and study their melody writing by picking it apart. Steal from the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Steal like a songwriter. <laughs> we're not saying actually no, steal. It's it's pay a, your respects. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up to bat, we have Sleepwalking. This is from Maya Steinman, and Maya's question is, Hi, Robin. I'd like to know what kind of listeners you think my song, Sleepwalking, might appeal to. Uh, the genre, okay. age group, and location. Got it. Yeah, I, from what you were asking, that's exactly the question you're asking, is what genre am I in, and who's my fan base? Yeah. to do in five minutes because um, three minutes three minutes there's so much <laughs> going on here okay so what I'm going to say is this uh, when people ask me what genre am I in after the song is done which this is clearly finished this is clearly recorded I'm not sure the mix is done the vocal sounds a little far out front to me but um, it sounds like it's a completed piece and you're asking me what genre you're in you then chances are nine ninety nine times out of a hundred that you're not in a genre which is the case here um, so you have some choices then. You can, there are elements here that remind me of, let's say, the bird and the bee. Okay, there's that kind of lounge element, which I love lounge, I love lounge, I love the bird and the bee. And you have that in your chorus. We're sleepwalking again, we're sweet talking with our eyes closed again. It's a beautiful lyric, excellent lyric in the chorus. Maybe we should stop fighting it off because the more we scramble, the more we get tangled up in it. Beautiful lyric in the chorus. And it's got a great melody that pulls the listener right into it. That's the type of thing that you hear with the bird and the bee. Or you, the verses, however, are pulling much more in an indie direction, although the production is not but the chords are, those awkward angular chords that you're using are pulling towards a, a kind of odd indie direction. Uh, I'm not even sure who I would compare that with. But, uh, and the, the harmony is pulling towards some of the duet, interesting duet things like Beach House and Chairlift. So there's a lot of influences here, but they're not gelling yet. And I think that's the real question you need to ask is 
what is the sound that you want that will that will you're going to have to probably trim prune a few things off and a few branches here and say okay we're not going to do that we're not going to say use words like the horror of finding because the word horror just does not fit anywhere else in this song you're going to have to discipline yourself a little bit and take a look at the bird and the bee or chairlift or beach house and see if you want to mix things with a little with more reverb like like uh, beach house does or you know take a look and and see who you want to approach a little bit more and the next time you are writing use that as a kind of template to to keep you focused on a genre literally write to a genre pick one that you like that t makes use of your strengths and and then aim for that and just practice that a little bit more because it sounds to me like things are pulling in too many directions i'm not sure if this is one person it's just maya steinman is the name given but i i there's also a male vocal on here and i'm wondering who the producer is if it's maya or it's somebody else and, and there's some fighting going on here and or, or at least not discussing what it is you're ultimately going for or a producer said i've got a great idea, idea. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and careful for its own song possibly but it felt like there were two or three songs in there yeah, th and there's too many things fighting each other. It, it almost felt like the verses were Broadway-esque, and, and then it goes to... That's a chord change doing that, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, and also the, the phrasing and the, the lyric felt kind of Broadway-esque to me. Mm -hmm. um, I kept seeing uh, Hamilton on stage yeah, as I was listening yeah. to it, and, and then the chorus came mm -hmm. on, and it's like, oh, that's cool, but it's completely and utterly different. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether you want to, maybe it was written for a stage piece, I, who knows, uh, but I would say if that's the case, then go more towards theater and take a look at some contemporary theater. Okay. All right, moving on, the next one is I Miss Your Love Like Crazy, and this one's from Bruce Dahlmeyer. Whoops, I'm sorry, uh, I'm wrong, it's Michael Mishnah. Yeah. What? What was the question? Oh, the question, sorry. It's a good thing I have a team. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's so much I get wrong left to my own devices. Uh, I used a hit by a current pop superstar as a song template for the idea structure, etc. But it confused the NSAI evaluator that gave me feedback on it. I wonder if it's really that confusing. Let's find Let's out. Let's find out. Yeah. Intriguing. <laughs> again was I used a hit by a current pop superstar as a song template uh, confuse the last evaluator can you give me feedback uh, wondering if that's if the song's confusing okay there's I, I don't even sure I understand the question exactly but uh, I don't know why the NSAI evaluator was confused what area they were confused on. here's what I my response to this is it's 
it's really beautifully focused. The verses are, she's so beautiful and all the wonderful things about her. And then the chorus is, uh, but I miss fighting with you and making up, meaning her, this she, she, and um, loving you, tender, hating your guts. It's, it's lyrically, it feels like it's trying to say an awful lot without actually making the listener feel what the singer is feeling. It's telling us what you're feeling. But musically, it's, it's, a, it's got a bluesy feel, but it's just kind of chugging along. It doesn't sound particularly contemporary. I have to say the track doesn't sound contemporary to me, and the melody doesn't sound contemporary to me. So I don't know exactly what the inspiration was. But as far as the lyric, the lyric idea and the structure of the lyric is quite good. It's, uh, it's you know, here's, what you, here's who you are and here's what I miss about you. And, and boy, right back on it, the second verse, here's who you are, here's what I miss about you. Um, but I think we're missing, uh, what we're missing is that what happened to break them up why is he missing this? And words like hating your guts probably aren't going to get a listener involved in, in the, with the singer. <laughs> got my attention. May I say that? got my attention, yeah, it did. But it doesn't make me like the singer or feel what the singer's feeling. Um, it didn't get me to identify with, with the singer. And so one of the things we have to watch out for is character. Um, that hasn't come up yet, as a matter of fact. This is interesting because we haven't come across this one. Is the character of the singer. Who is the singer and why should the listener care? So here's the listener going, well, she's so beautiful and indisputable. She uh, Wonderful rhymes, by the way. <laughs> Supermodel, choosy mom. I, it's yeah. just charming, absolutely charming. And and so the listener is going, okay, I, I get this. And But then when the singer switches gears and gets to the chorus and says, I miss fighting with you and making up, loving you tender, hating your guts, it's too much. It, it, the character of the singer becomes too aggressive. And for a woman to, to listen to the song, it's rather difficult. Um, I guess I didn't get enough. I miss your love like crazy. Well, gee, sorry, you didn't get enough. I mean, it's a, it's a very off-putting chorus. So the character of the singer at all times needs to draw the listener in and make the listener. This is what Shawn Mendes does so well. And, J and uh, Jason Derulo does it well. And and uh, Justin Bieber does it really well these days, is draw the listener in. And even though he's saying things like love yourself is a really interesting lyric in which he's really blaming this other person who's, who's for something she's doing, um, you still can identify with him because he lets you know why he feels the way he does. And you can say, yeah, I get it. I would probably feel the same way. So you always want the listener to identify with the singer. So here I would say the first thing I would be looking at is the character of the singer and making sure that the listener always stays on your side. There's one line I've got to point out, one oh. lyric uh, that was after, we didn't get to it yet, but you were narcotic, exotic, made me psychotic. I just don't have words for how good that is. That's <laughs> astonishingly funny to me. Um, there's really cute, yeah, yeah, I know, this whole thing, even my picky mom, even my choosy mom says yep. that I'm lucky to have her. It's a really good line. She can charm my boss. She's never at a loss for words. Says what she wants to say. Martha Stewart, refined, tasteful. Yep. Really good lyric writing in there. Just watch out that it doesn't. You don't get carried away with the lyric, and um, and leave the listener in the dust. And we've all had and, one relationship like that in our lifetimes. At least some of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next up we have Upside Down. This one is actually by Bruce Dahlmeyer. And the question nice. is, I'm uh, curious if these lyrics would work for film and TV or if this is a genre that would even be used for film and TV. Okay. Let's find Good out. Question. It's called Upside Down. Take 
that just really uplifting really does sweep I love the fact you go sweep me up turn me upside down and just as that music is really sweeping up and the rhythm comes in and a beautiful chorus great voice really great vocal and I love the harmony parts on that second chorus or when we went around the second time really beautiful um, the chorus yes for film and TV yes the, because the chorus is expressing the emotion that the singer is singing about and that's what film and TV songs really have to do. They're used as underscore. So when they put it underneath the scene, the vocal, the melody, the lyric, uh, the instrumentation, all of it needs to work together to create a single emotion or, or uh, ambiance or energy. So, so here we have a song that starts with a very electro, rather choppy feel. I love the, the little chip sound and stuff, but it's it switches, it changes when it hits that chorus and all of the rhythm comes in and everything. And although some of the instrumentation stays the same as you go into the chorus, the chip sound continues through that, etc. But even then, there's not enough similarity. It would be very difficult to put that under a scene because it's not just a dynamic growth, it's a big change in feel. Your first two verses are very different than when the chorus suddenly sweeps in. And so if they're going to have a hard time putting that underneath the scene because there isn't likely to be a scene that changes that much from this kind of rather introspe introspective and poetic feel into this more uplifting and, and sweeping emotional feel. So I would say the thing to do here is to look at, I think the chorus is very successful and I think it could do well in film and television. And it's very clear, sweep me up, turn me upside down, no need to touch the ground, I can't tell what I feel right now, this love could be unbound, is a very clear statement of what the singer's feeling. It's a good, strong chorus for film and TV. I would take a look if you want to. As an artist, this may be your style, and this is an album cut for you, and you don't want to change it, which is fine. But if you want to pitch it to film and television, or you want to write another song and pitch to film and TV, then what I would do is make sure that the verses are similar, have a, have more similarity to the chorus and build to the chorus both musically and in terms of the lyrics. So in your verses you would want to also use words with a similar emotional baggage to what you're using in your chorus. Sweep me up and turn me upside down. When you come out of that chorus, don't go to a, a, a thriving tree, a withering weed because those are very much the opposite of what you want the listener to feel and what to, the feeling that you're creating in your chorus. So try to get your choruses and your verses working more closely together and get those verses to lead. It's like the train leaves the station, you know, and once it leaves the station, it, it's going to lead you inevitably to that chorus. You don't want anybody wondering how you got to that chorus from the verse. You've got to take them there yourself. That's, that's part of our job as songwriters. Okay. okay. 
Moving on, this one is called Steady, Smooth, and Slow. It's by Joseph Holt, and the question is, Hi, Robin. I'm wondering if Steady, Smooth, and Slow has what would be considered universal lyrics. Also, the bridge feels a bit weak to me overall, but I can't say why. So let's have a listen and find okay. out. Since I was nine, sitting on my daddy's knees, and I'll track to down the road. We lost the farm, dad is gone, I moved to town to find a job, we don't even have a tractor anymore. And hear a little whisper in my ear on the days he let me steer. Fields and life for a lot of luck, you know. Taking steady, smooth, and slow. That's bad. There's so much that I regret, but life ain't nearly with me yet. There are lessons in the wounds I've earned. I took a wife on Paul's advice. How can you know what all your life might mean when you're standing there with her? Her granddad's words were loving wise. We remembered all our lives. We must have saved us a hundred times or more. Take it steady, smooth and slow. double bridge I it's, think. A, it's a big long bridge yeah. life it hits like a moving storm i think that's where the bridge starts um uh no i don't think the bridge is weak just to answer your question the bridge feels a bit weak to me overall but i can't say why uh life it hits like a moving storm like a cyclone growling across that farm no i think the bridge is fine i don't hear anything weak there it's a really good song it's a really good song um beautifully crafted it's got a, a wonderful storyline that goes through the entire song it's not universal it's not a universal lyric at all because right from the beginning i could plow a line since i was nine i mean immediately we're drawn into a, this yeah. man's life story yeah it's a great story it's, it's a great it's, it's almost a like a bruce springsteen song where he mm -hmm. does the story i mean it's really yeah. interesting yeah so i don't know why you're asking if it's universal because that's not what you set out to write you really are telling a very specific life story of this man and the voice works really well the voice seems to fit the character the the um, language is right for that character. Um, it has a lot of authenticity to it. Uh, he's in that old tractor down the row. We lost the farm. He would whisper around in my ear. Um, he'd let me steer a field. And I love the payoff line, take them steady, smooth, and slow. And then you hit that big uh, chorus, steady like a breeze on a summer day, smooth like a lover that wants you to stay. Beautiful. It's a beautiful song. I would be pitching this in country. Um, it's got more of an Americana feel than it does country, but boy, for the right artist in country, this has a lot of appeal because it has that great, huge, steady, uh, steady, smooth, and slow is a killer payoff line. 
and there are a lot of male artists who like to have it's a little bit sexy it's a lot of feel and warmth and it would take a, a brave country artist that's willing They're to there. color outside of yeah. the lines which right there's never been a better time for They're doing there. that and we've got a publisher who's been looking for that stuff who's been who is running listings with us with taxi so i know there's somebody looking for these kinds of classic timeless songs uh, like humble and kind, um, you know. So I, I think you could. It depends on when you hit these artists. So if Blake Shelton has just made a dash for kind of a more contemporary sound and he wants to pull back into traditional for the next album because he's afraid of losing that part of his audience, he's going to be interested in a song like this. So it just depends on hitting it the right artist at the right time. But I think this is very strong. I really do. I really do. Uh, gosh, we just ran a listing the other day that. Uh, it's killing me now, but there are two or three country acts out there that don't do straight-ahead country. Um, they're, they're pushing the boundaries. Um, the old guard in Nashville doesn't love them, but they're getting a lot of attention because the audience is younger. This is who that would appeal to. It, the song's got an old soul. It's got, it does. It's and, got, and that's yeah. what probably yeah, means. Yeah, it's got authenticity. It, There's going to be a time when you're going to hit an Eric Church just right, and he's going to want to do this. Um the, I can think of a couple more, too. Yeah. The uh, Americana aspect, mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad you brought that up because people don't really tie Americana is more about the, the subject matter and the lyrics. People think that if I've got a song with an acoustic guitar, it's not country, it's not singer-songwriter, therefore it's Americana. <laughs> but the lyrics mean so much uh, yeah. you know, to define Americana. Yeah, this is definitely Americana. This is right in the Bruce Springsteen and, and right now Ryan Adams is considered Americana and uh, there's a lot happening in Americana. Um, this type of song, by the way, if you did want to do more like this, but don't write this specific storyline, just take us into a moment between this man and his wife or this man and his dad, just a moment, and, and just give us the emotions in that moment. You could be pitching to film and television because the character is right for film and TV. They use a lot of Americana in film and TV. Okay. All right. Next well up, we have Easy to Believe in Love. This is by Linda Starr, and Linda's question is, in what categories would you place my song, Easy to Believe in Love? I'm thinking she means genre, so let's have a listen and find out.
Yeah. I want to give you a heads up. We've got Please? technically 10 minutes yeah. to cover the next six songs. Okay. Good luck. Oh, right. You have to do nothing for the top right thing. Um, this is jazz. Uh, I mean, it has a jazz flavor to the melody and the chord progression. So you're, you're going to have to aim for jazz. The thing I would say about this song is that the lyrics need to be kicked up several notches. The vocal is, is good. The, you have this, I'm assuming that's you, Linda. And uh, it's got a beautiful, powerful vocal behind it. But when I hear lines like, every time I say that I don't need you anymore, coming right out of you make it easy to believe in love, I can't make that transi transition fast enough. L listeners can't follow you there. So they just can't change that, change gears that fast. So when you finish with you make it easy to believe in love at the end of your chorus, I would say start the next verse every time I, use, I, I say that I don't need you anymore. I wouldn't go there for the next verse. I would just follow on with um, showing us how easy, how, how this person makes it easy to fall in love. Don't, don't change to believe in love. Don't change us, uh, that up on us so much. And watch out for what lines like you appear and open up a brand new door. Um, it's, it sounds like it's there for the rhyme, anymore, door. Um, and, you know, do you really feel that way? If you do feel that way, then write about what you feel. Not, don't tell us that it's like opening up a brand new door because we've heard that a lot before and it's one of those things that we don't feel anymore because we've heard it too often. It's true, but we don't feel it anymore because it's been overused. So try finding another way to say that one that really uh, echoes how you honestly feel about this person and get that honesty into that song, into lines like that. Tough to not use cliches when it's speaking very, about love. Isn't it? Because <laughs> it's all bit, you know. That's why good songwriters are really good songwriters. Right. Start listening to a few singer-songwriters that you like and start noticing how they write about love because, boy, there's some great songwriters out there doing that. All right, moving on. Oh, my goodness, the question on this next one is a paragraph. Okay, uh, okay this next song is Your Life Matters by Bruce Hinton. Uh, this song, Your Life Matters, has been non-exclusively donated to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. The goal of the song is to get people who need to hear that their life matters and to the people who have the power to give that message through friendship and just being there. That said, does the song hit the mark? Is it too understated? I guess we only get one question. Yeah, Bruce, we do. <laughs> so my question is, how does this song make you feel? Robin is an expert on how songs make you feel, so let's listen and find okay. out.
Okay. This is such an important message, of course, to give people. Um, one of the things that happens when we write songs about ideas is that the song remains in the world of ideas rather than making the person feel what you want them to feel. And this is the great challenge of writing songs about um, uh, songs of social awareness or songs of social conscience and commentary. And one of the things I warn people about, because I've written about this before, is to not tell people what to feel. Make them feel it. And this has come up a few times today in, in what we've been in the songs we've been talking about. A line like "Your life matters to the world" is the very thing that this person who's in trouble doesn't believe because they are feeling depression. I mean, anybody who's been anywhere near despair and depression and suicidal people knows that just saying your life matters to the world is not going to convince them. You can certainly say it, but in some cases, it will actually make the person feel worse because they can't feel that. Um, you need to write a song if you really want to reach this particular use. I would say, give us more lines for example, this line, I'll wear a milk mustache to make you laugh. Now you're doing it. You know, now you're showing us what you could do. Anybody who's ever tried to, to talk to a person in, in despair and depression, and depression, and I've certainly done it, has found ways to do it. I had a friend that if I, play, if I sent him a Motown, he would perk up when he heard Motown. So I would send him Motown, try to save his life. You know, it, it's, you do what you can do. And you need to tell people, find ways to tell people and show people what, what, you can, what will make you renew your faith in life. If you could do that in your verses, I will salute you. It's really hard to do. Are you talking to the person who's feeling despairing or are you talking to the people who want to help them? Which is it? And when you do that, how can you do that other than telling them to feel better? because that's probably not going to reach them. I realize this is a little bit harsh and I apologize, but I think you want to do something really good for people and you may have a way of doing uh, an inroad into you know, some, some contacts where, that would allow you to do that. I would take a look at this lyric. I like the idea of my friend come walk with me. There's a lot of long pauses in this melody, maybe a little bit too long. Try a little more momentum in your melody, which would carry people along with you. My friend, come walk with me. I'll lead you out from the valley. That's a pretty big promise. So the question is, how will you do that? And the next two lines need to tell us. Let me take your suitcase for a while. I'm not sure I would say suitcase. I would probably go for your burdens or your, you know, your load. Let me, let me lift your load for a while. A burden, well, you're going to use it. A burden grows much lighter when we smile together. That's a very nice thing to say. Let's be together and we can do better together. That kind of thing will work. Keep doing that. Your life matters to the world. Be careful. Be careful about that. Um, try to show us how your life matters to the world. What are the small things that this person does that make other people value them? And why are they of value? See if you can do that. Okay? It's a tough one. It's a real big... Um, there's power in the choices that we make. Be careful. That's a thought. Try to stay with the energy and the, of love and the, and the emotion that you want, to, the uplifting emotion. Watch out for some of these chords. You've got some pretty hairy chords there. They're very ambivalent. They're jazz chords. Watch out. You might want to simplify those chords a little bit, lean towards the major a little bit more on those rising lines, and try to make people feel what you want them to feel. Okay? All right. Serious subject. Yeah, very. And hard to talk about and hard to write about, even harder to write about. I salute you for doing it. Yep. I say leave it to the professionals because it's really hard. It's but, hard, yeah. Um, okay, moving on. The next song is called Together, and it's by Hunter Mariano. And the question is, does the 30-second intro help or hurt me if I'm pitching the song to music supervisors? I can tell you the answer right now. <laughs> Do two versions and cut it short in one of the versions and pitch it that way. And then if you get somebody interested in it, then you can say, I have one with a 30-second intro. I know for a fact Ben Howard did that with Promise. He has a one minute long intro on that song and it gets used in, in fact with the complete intro So sometimes when you're pitching it's better to pitch with the short intro And then just let them know if they're interested in the song that you have a longer intro Because it's not the intro itself is not going to make a difference in whether it gets picked up or not 
going to um, Frank Palazzolo's thing, and I believe uh, Mason Cooper echoed the sentiment several times on stage at the rally this year. Long intros. Frank listened to a thousand songs in an hour. And that's a true story. He literally He's was, gonna fast forward past it anyway. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he he was literally listening to the first couple of seconds going, Vibes not there, vibes not there, vibes the there, thing. drag it over to that pile. Vibes not there, vibes not there, vibes there, drag it to the good pile. So if you've got an intro that's too long, it's never gonna make it to the good pile. Let's Robin's see what the vibe is in this intro. Yeah. Okay. And see if Frank Palazzola would move it to the yeah, let's keep it pile. All right. Mm, let's play it. Uh, this is together by Hunter Mariano. in the Jack Johnson style and I would think there would be appeal to music libraries um, very cute it works really well for scenes love scenes obviously I mean it's just it's very focused it's very happy it's a cute meet scene a first date scene could work well for something like freeform TV um, I would say uh, definitely pitch it without the long intro it's actually a much more interesting song than the intro would suggest the intro also gives it that strong Caribbean feel, and if they're not looking for that, they may discard it just upon hearing the first few beats of the song. And I really would like them to hear the song. Uh, and the opening lines of the song, You Belong With Me, We Belong Together, state the theme of the song, and it just carries it on from there. Great melody, great. Uh, I love the male vocal on this. The female vocal is also very good, but I would pitch it... Uh, you could pitch it this way, but you may want to also have the male vocal all the way through. And it's a t uh, duets are really, really, really hard. They're to harder use. to pitch. Be because uh, they conflict with the storyline. It's like male, female, call, yeah. response, question, answer. And it doesn't so work So I would with the do a, a complete, with because I, I love the male vocal a lot. And the, it's the a, texture the, of yeah, his voice. The, and the it's engineer really gets an A++ on that. I agree. Um, yeah, so I would do a male vocal all the way through for pitching and then let them know that you have a duet, let them know that you have a longer intro, that kind of thing. But this is a very strong song. I would get to the song quickly, do a male vocal all the way through and be pitching this thing. Absolutely. Great Good. job in that one. Okay, moving on, we are on I'm Freaking Out by Joshua W. Turner. I love the title. 
Um, and Joshua's question is, would this song work for a television ad? Target, Walmart, T-Mobile, etc. I'm so happy today. I just can't explain it. I can't contain it. I got my headphones on Turned up to 11 Or maybe 12 And it may not mean that much to you But it's everything to me And I'm freaking out Question, uh, would this work for a TV ad? Probably not, for a number of reasons. Um, uh, the advertisers freaking out is not a good thing to be feeling. Uh, I'm freaking out is, you know, there's, there's aspects of that that are just not happy. <laughs> and brands don't really want to associate that uh, with their product. So uh, Target, um, if, for example, if you were going to say, and I'm... I'm, I'm freaking out. I found so many wonderful things. Uh, I can't decide what to take or what to buy or what to do today because I've got so much great stuff in my life. I'm freaking out. You could probably possibly get away with it. But as the hook line of the song, I'm freaking out because that's what life is all about. I, I think that you're going to have trouble with uh, a brand wanting to associate those, those particular lines. So you, wanna, you started out with I'm so happy today. And yet, I'm freaking out doesn't necessarily mean I'm happy, and it's, that's what life is all about. It's going to be hard, because the, the other thing that's happening is the music and the melody is not expressing the happiness side of freaking out. If, you, if what you want to express is, I'm freaking out, I'm so happy, what a, what a party, life's, life's crazy. Um, you'd have to have really redo the music for this, so that the music conveys the emotion that you want freaking out to mean. And here, you've got this heavy kind of rock guitar and a kind of a bluesy feel to it, and it's pulling the feeling downward. It's pulling it towards a more negative interpretation of freaking out. I, I think that he felt the uh, gang vocal, the group unison chanty chorus with a thousand young people screaming, I'm freaking out, which is hard to understand, quite frankly, if I didn't know I the didn't title. I didn't get to the second one, yeah. It, it's, um, maybe that's where the idea came from. Um, and I've got a confession to make, as long as we're on the subject to Target. I recently shoplifted at a Target. Um, I got to, I was doing the self-checkout at the Target, kind of out by oh. us, and uh, I paid for the bag, because in Southern California, you have to pay for a bag now. Mm -hmm. um, so I paid for the bag, and there weren't any bags. So I'm screaming, hey, I need a bag over here. There aren't any bags, and they wouldn't respond to me. So I just took a little basket of my stuff and went, I'm stealing your basket, and walked out of the store. <laughs> so it's in the back of my car. It'll come back. But for the moment, I'm a shoplifter, technically. Well, at least you didn't do it in China. That's, That's true. true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Um, this next song is called Face the Sun. It's by Sonia Garlic. And the question is, how can I make the chorus more dynamic? That's okay, a question. here we go. Parachute floating through the winds A 
Straight into your verse, the second yep. verse. Good. Okay. I thought you did a good job. I'm not sure why you're asking that question. You got a slow verse with long lines and pauses in between the lines, and then you start to pick up the speed in the pre-chorus with shorter phrases. New door has opened. Gonna step on through. Use all my moments for tomorrow's with you. Much. Those are much shorter. So you're building momentum. Uh, got a face. The sun. Nice rising feel to it uh, in the in the melody. Got to face the sun, look through the clouds, believe in new beginnings without fear. I wouldn't repeat the first two lines, got to face the sun, look through the clouds. I would put new lyric in there, believe in new beginnings without fear, got to something else, got to walk on through, got to something. Uh, it's time to love again. I'm not sure where again comes from uh, because we, sh the singer has not said that she's had a long history of, of broken heart heartbreak or anything like that. So watch out for the word again. It's probably just filler. Um, so, and the idea of got to face the sun, going to face the sun, how about, going to face the sun. Um, a new door is open, going to step on through, use all my moments for tomorrow's with you, going to face the sun, look through the clouds, believe in new beginnings without fear. Going to keep on walking into tomorrow, whatever you want to say there, um, it's time to love, now you're here. Um, I think melodically, musically, you built nicely into your chorus. You could add, you could rise that melody line a little bit more even. But gonna face the sun. That is nice. You've got a good those interval jumps add energy in the chorus. Um, so no, I think you're doing pretty well. You could add a high harmony to that, and that might lift it higher. Um, you can uh, take a look at face the sun, look through the clouds, keep it happier. Gonna instead of believe in new beginnings without fear. We're not really talking about fear here. Why don't we embrace those new beginnings? and um and uh not right to the rhyme okay um i think you're in pretty good shape I, d I don't think i think i would add a higher harmony part and maybe look at the lyric and give us more i know try this try giving us more words with emotion the emotional baggage right the emotional associations that you want the listener to feel so give me more sun okay take a look at a song like um brighter than the sun by uh, Colby Calais. And there's just a brilliant burst of energy in that chorus where there's, you know, it's allowed, it's gunshots and, and fireworks and explosions and bright things happening. Try that. Try more language uh, because I think musically you're doing okay. Give us more bright language, more sunshine, more loudness, more ex explo more exploding into the future, more of that. And, um, Take a look at Brighter Than the Sun, and you'll see a really good example of that in that song. Okay? Okay, last one. This is called Perfect Day. It's by Ellie Parr, and the question is, what could I do to make this more syncable? Let's have a look. Syncable, film and TV, okay. Yep. It's easier to love and to lose your way than to ask for a helping hand. But have you lived yourself up for one more day? You find it was part of the plan. It's ain't a dream, it's not an album. No, oh, it's not my soliloquy. It's a path through the heart, it's a way to the start, a part of a new reality. Breathe it in, let it go, whatever it takes to keep them eyes from the load. Breathe it in, let it go, just keep that joy overflowing.
of life Giving away the smile on my face Free to the taker just like it's a holiday Pumping in my heart with them like a star Be who you are, I can start a new philosophy Cause I got pain, got shine, got healing, got blind Gonna lift up the world, just mine This is very good. Uh, there's a yes. There's a lot that's syncable here. This is the first one I've actually come across today where I would say, uh, make your second verse your first verse. Starting with now the sun shining out so bright, got me feeling the love, got me soaking up life. That's the double ver that section from there on to the next chorus is the one that starts the song. Um, because starting with it's easier to love and to lose your way is a concept. And I'm not into the song yet. I'm not into the feel and the emotion of the song. And that's right where you need to go to get a good sync on this song. Is right to the, now the sun is shining out so bright, got me feeling the love, got me soaking up life. That's the emotion of the song. And when you hit, uh, the pumping in my heart, rhythm like a star, be who you are, I can start a new philosophy. All, it really got me going, made me feel good. And so when you get to the chorus, when the sun is shining out, it's a perfect day. If the rain is pouring down, it's a perfect day. It's still a perfect day. Double that chorus length, okay? And on the following line, which you're now going to add, okay? So you double the chorus length. When the sun is shining out, it's a perfect day. If the rain is pouring down, it's a perfect day. I don't care. I got. You want to add something to that because the chorus has to be able to stand alone, okay? So just add a couple lines right in there that say, don't matter to me because I got love in my veins. It, no matter what, if it's shiny or rain, it's a perfect day. Uh, give us just a little bit more on that chorus. You may not have to, but try definitely double the length on that because it's wonderful and it really makes the listener feel good. And that's what that's what syncable is, is it underscores a scene, it adds emotion, energy, or atmosphere, and pumps it up. And this is exactly the kind of thing that will do that. I think it's a very has a lot of potential for film and television. Double the length of that chorus. See if you want to change a couple of those lines as you sing that doubled chorus to give it a little bit more context. So that let's say that the editor just wanted to drop in that chorus underneath a scene or at the end of a scene, um, it might stand alone. I think it might work either way, but just give it a try, okay? Awesome, so here's what we're gonna do. First of all, I wanna let you know that there will not be another Taxi TV until January 8th mm -hmm. because next week I am going to be out of town on Monday. I thought about doing a remote from Chicago but I'm going to be with my dad. He's 93 years old. I want to spend every minute I can with him rather than doing taxi uh -huh. TV. So I think he deserves my full attention. So next week, no show. The following Monday is Christmas Day. No show. The following Monday is New, New Year's. Year's Day. No show. So our next show will be on January 8th. But I think that what we might do is send out emails on those days reminding you guys, sending you links to some of our favorite shows that we've done over the years so that you guys can be reminded and go back and check those out. Now, for voting for this show, what we're going to do is very quickly, Bria is going to play like the first 10 seconds of each of these as a little refresher course. Then after the show's over, she's going to go down to her office. She's going to do the final post on YouTube. Uh, for the archive and then you guys need to go in the comment section underneath the video and that's where you put your vote for what you think is the best song and then tomorrow uh, we will total up the songs we will let the winner know that they won and the winner at that point in time gets to say gee I'd like a copy of Shortcuts to Hit Songwriting or Gee golly, I'd like a copy of Shortcuts to Songwriting for Film and TV without the word sample on the front of the book. <laughs> or you can have the one with the post-it notes all over it. <laughs> this is clearly my copy. Um, 
but we will send the book out and hopefully you'll get it right before Christmas. So there you go. Um, Robin, thank you. Uh, just I'm honored to have the final uh, Taxi TV of 2017 and yeah. I think we should all give Michael a round of applause for Taxi TV. <laughs> Thank you very much. 2017, because he does such a great job. I gotta say, this was we've been doing the show. Thank you for seven years now, and seven I'm, years. Yeah, oh my goodness. Seven years, and this was my personal favorite year for just great shows all year. There was only one show where I, after I clicked off, I went. Eh, it's done better. <laughs> Anyway, don't tell which one that I'm was. not going to. I'm no. going to make you go search. So thank you guys for watching all year long. We love you guys. Love having you in the chat room. Um, feels like a family because it is like a family. So go remember, give five minutes. Go grab a tea. Go to the ladies' room, men's room. Do whatever you do for five minutes. But then go back to our YouTube page. And underneath this video in the comment section is where you vote for the best song. And now we're going to play... The beginning of each song very quickly starting out with I Can't Change Your Mind by Chris Watts. Oh. <laughs> Sun's falls like rain between us. Okay, next up we have Then Reality. This one's by Carrie Moore. This is where short intros are our big help. <laughs> right. <laughs> Next up, we have Any More by Carl Wurzbach. Gotta take my time Struggle for words Something's wrong This is absurd Just can't do Okay, next one up is I Just Want Love for Christmas by Angela Shake. Next one is I Ran Out of Time by Patrick Adams. one is Sleepwalking by Maya Steinman. This reminds me of Four O'Clock Balloon. Mm -hmm. Whatever their song was. Okay, next one is I Miss Your Love Like Crazy by Michael Mishnya. Michael Mishnya. Great guitar sound. Mm -hmm. Right, and the next one is Upside Down by Bruce Dahlmeyer. Bryce, sorry, Bryce Dahlmeyer. Been sorry about that, I Bryce. Got it. <laughs> For you. Thank you. Stuff from my dreams, sweetest thing that I. And the next one is Steady, Smooth, and Slow by Joseph Holt. I can flower line since I was nine, sitting on my daddy's knees, and I'll track to down the road. 
We lost the phone, dad is gone, we moved to town to find a job, we don't even have a tractor anymore. And the next one is Easy to Believe in Love by Linda Starr. Life Matters by Bruce Hinton. This one is Together by Hunter Mariano. Next up we have the classic I'm Freaking Out by Joshua Turner. I'm so happy today. I just can't explain it. I can't contain it. I got my headphones on. And next up we have Face the Sun by Sonia Garlic. Last but not least, we have Perfect Day by Ellie Parr. It's easier to love and to lose your way than to ask for a helping hand. But if you lift yourself up for one more day, you find it was part of the plan. It's ain't a dream, it's not a lamp, oh no, it's not my soliloquy. It's a path through the heart, it's a way to the start, a part of all right. So good. So good. That's for all you so guys good. and ladies. Thank you so much for oh, submitting. Yeah, Robin, right. thank you again for doing a great job as always. Wins, they're all winners. Yay. And, and okay, so you have till tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific time to get your votes up there. Um, you know what? I'm going to give a book away to. I'm going to pick somebody random out of all the people that vote. I'm going to do one of those where I shut my eyes, go up and down. We'll pick out. Somebody who voted gets a book, and the person who gets the most votes gets a book. Book of your choice, okay? So that's it. See you guys on January 8th. Uh, that's it. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and a great 2018. Bye, you guys, from Texas World Headquarters. Over and out.